Hello everyone and welcome back to the Angular University. In this new section of the course we're going to be talking about the Angular defer syntax which is used for partial template loading. Now this syntax is actually a performance optimization. This is not 100% necessary to build an Angular application. This is only meant to be used when your application is starting to show some performance problems. For example there are pages that are starting to become slow. They take a long time to load etc or you can apply it preventively as well so that the application never reaches that state anyway i thought that this was a good place in the course to introduce this syntax this could have been introduced anywhere right here at the beginning or at the end of the course because it's such a good practice to think of ways of using this from the beginning as you are building your application from scratch i prefer to introduce it earlier in the course now what is this defer partial template loading syntax all about the best way to understand when a defer is useful is by means of an example so let's take here for example this application component that we have here we have here a section of the page which corresponds to this courses list here so it's most of the content of the page now this component of course it's very lightweight it's a example component for learning purposes only but imagine for a second that this is a heavyweight component that takes a lot of dependencies for example imagine that this is a section of the page needs a javascript chart library or it needs a pdf generation library it needs some heavyweight third party dependency in order to work properly now next imagine that this section of the page page is not always visible to the user. The user will have to click on a button to open a dialogue to see it, or it will have to click on a print button in order to use it. Now, imagine next that that functionality is rarely used. So in most of the user sessions, that functionality that requires heavy third-party JavaScript libraries or that it requires large and complex components, that functionality is not always visible to the user and rarely used. Well, why would we then load the code that we need for that functionality if we are not 100% sure that we are going to need it? Ideally, for any given user session, we should only load the JavaScript code that we need in order to execute the tasks that the user is doing and nothing more. The more unnecessary code we load and we add to our main application bundle, the slower the whole application is going to feel. So if we detect in our application opportunities to split up the code and extract pieces of functionality that are rarely used into their own separate JavaScript bundle, we should do so. That way, the payload of our application reduces. I'm talking about the JavaScript payload and our application is going to load faster and it's going to overall feel faster. So that's where at defer is useful. At defer would allow us to control exactly when and if a given section of the page is loaded from the server and even displayed to the user. At defer, as we are going to learn in the next few sections, supports a wide variety of advanced use cases. For example, imagine that you want to load the bundle of a library whenever the user starts to hover with the mouse over a given section and then the bundle gets loaded in the background but then the code is only displayed to the user if the user clicks in a button imagine that you are using a heavyweight chart library that is only visible if you open a dialogue well you could detect that the user has entered a region close to the button that opens the dialogue trigger the loading of the bundle in the background and then show the dialogue to the user only when the user clicks in a button another typical case is with content that is below the fold so the fold is the visible part of the viewport that is visible when the application is initially loaded so the term comes from print media you have a newspaper that is being sold in a, a magazine and there is the part above the fold which is the part that is visible before the newspaper gets opened up so that's where the term comes from so the content visible above the fold would be these free course cards here in our card list and you can see here that the rest would be below the fold so imagine a page that has 
a lot of functionality where the user needs to scroll in order to see functionality at the bottom. Now imagine the situation that in many user sessions, the user never scrolls down the page. Well, in that case, why load the JavaScript that is going to be needed only if the user scrolls down the page, if most of the times that JavaScript is not going to be needed. So what you can do with at defer is to, for example, lower the page and display it instantly to the user. But then in the background, as the user is doing other tasks, slowly lower the extra functionality and keep it loaded in the background, but don't add it to the page yet. And then only when the user starts scrolling and when a certain section of the page gets visible, only then apply the code that was preloaded in the background to the screen. So this is a very important notion about at defer that I need you to keep in mind in the next few sections. At defer allows us to separate parts of our template into a separate JavaScript bundle that gets loaded separately. And we have two different levels of control, all right? This is a very important concept. We can control when the bundle is prefetched in the background. All right, and we can also control if the bundle is prefetched at all. There could be situations where if that trigger condition does not occur, the code will never be loaded, not even in the background. That's even better. So that's the first level of control that we have with at defer. We can decide when a given section of our page, a given bundle gets prefetched under which conditions. But separately from that, and it's important not to mix the two levels of control, we have a second level of control, which is to define when the section that was preloaded in the background, when will it be applied to the page and displayed to the user? So for example, you could have an example of some code that gets loaded in the background, and then after the loading is completed, the code will only be applied to the template and visible to the user if the user, for example, clicks in a button. So we can control those two things separately. We can control when the code gets loaded and we can control when the code gets applied to the template and shown to the user. Those are two separate things. It's important not to mix them up. So this is the Angular at defer functionality. So now in our next few lessons, we're going to do the following. We are going to talk about the at defer block, which I haven't yet demonstrated. I'm going to show you straight up in our next lesson how it works. We're going to have here some common basic defer blocks, placeholder, loading and error. We're going to introduce those first. And then we are going to have a whole section on built-in triggers. Those are the trigger conditions that I talked to you about, such as, for example, that the user can load a bundle if a button gets clicked. That's an example of a trigger. There are many built-in triggers. We're going to cover them all one by one. And then we're going to learn how to build our own custom triggers if needed. So everything is going to be split up into nice bite-sized lessons, starting with the basic use of at defer that we're going to demonstrate in our next lesson.